announcements for Sunday, March 21st, 2021. Our church theme, Restoration Will Come in 2021. March is the Black Teens Month. Team members, please step up and help with everything that needs to be done. Cleaning and help is greatly needed in the food shelf ministry. As we continue to serve our community, Prep help is needed from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturdays. Thank you. March memory verse. I am them and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. John 17 and 23. March birthdays. Javari McKissie IV, Trayvon Sims the 9th, 
Deaconess Angela MacArthur the 11th, Patrice Cunningham the 12th, Kenya Washington the 12th, Minister Marshall Westbrook the 14th, Moesha Sanders the 15th, Denise Williams the 18th, Florine Williams the 18th, Minister Brittany Neiman the 19th, Miles Clark Armstead the 24th, Yvette Wills the 25th, Yvonne Payton the 26th, Chandria Bracey the 27th, Davion Ellis the 28th, and JC Wills the 30th. Happy birthday! Bible study sessions are on Tuesday nights at 6.45 p.m. Check your email for a Zoom meeting invite or phone call. Join us as we walk through the Bible studying about prayer. We stand in solidarity against the hateful violence that has occurred this week in Atlanta and across the nation, and we lift up in prayer the families of those lost to senseless violence. We pray that God lift up a standard of peace and unity in this across this country. Amen. March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month. Did you know that early detection through prevention and screening is proven to dramatically reduce fatalities from colorectal cancer? Awareness of this preventable disease is part of the battle. Ask your doctor if you should start screening and about screening options. Also, if you're a faith study participant or not, let's make sure to maintain healthy habits. Let's continue to be good stewards of what God's giving us in CBC. This concludes our announcements for today. But before we go, the month of March celebrates the contributions women have made throughout history. We celebrate Women's History Month to remind ourselves of the accomplishments of women throughout the years to our culture and society. From science to politics, law, sports, the arts, entertainment, and many other fields, there are countless extraordinary women who have earned their place at the table. Take this month as a chance to reflect on the trailblazing women who lead the way for change. Ladies, hold your head high, wear your purple, strut your stuff, and celebrate women's history. Until next time.
Hello, church, and uh, welcome to our Sunday service. Today, uh, I'll be providing the message, which will be from 1 John chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. And it reads, No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. And his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he is in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Okay, so I want to take this time to start, start us off with a bigger prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this time of fellowship and gathering. Even, even with it being virtual, God, I ask that you just lead this time, lead this message, and that you put your work through me and whoever, uh, really, whoever needs to hear it uh, gets touched. Yeah. 
talking to somebody who actually you have a deep love and care for does something that the pain actually sticks. The second category of love that God has for us is called crack love, which is an enduring love. So, or an everlasting love. And that's just comforting to know that no matter what we do, God is going to love us. Mm -hmm. Even whether we are being obedient, disobedient, or following His word, you know, He's having to correct us. Um, he, even those that, you know, don't love, that don't know Him, He has that, He has that love for and that, that desire to have you come to Him. And which is never ending. The third category of love that God has is agape, which is a selfless love. Or one where you're putting others above yourself. The ultimate example of this is when Jesus came down. You know, Jesus came down to teach us the way to live to save us, even those that didn't know him, and he knew he knew would reject him while he was on earth, he still came down to teach them how to be righteous, and to ultimately die for their sin, sins and give them the opportunity to come to God. So, yes, let's address the question does loving somebody mean that we must accept everything about them? There is truth in this statement where if you love somebody and they're coming to you, especially if they're coming to the church, they are always welcome. Everything. Uh, John 6.37 says, Come as you are, and I will in no last cast you out. A lot, of, like, a lot of people will call on this verse and be like, come as you are, and then, you know, you're good, just come here, keep living, your, keep living your life. So it's true that, yes, come into the church, come to Jesus, come to us, out of, and out of love, we will accept, we will welcome you with open arms. However, it doesn't quite, it doesn't say, stay as you are. Amen. That leads, that leads to the next point, but why do people come to Jesus in the first place? Right. Like, why did you come to Jesus in the first place? I know I came to Jesus because there was a hole in me that needed to be filled, Amen. and basically I was going down a path that was not good for myself. Jesus a lot of times is referred to as a physician or a doctor. So why do people go to a doctor? They don't go to the doctor just to get all oh, your health, just healthy, keep doing what you're doing, and you know everything's fine. You go to a doctor because you're sick. You need healing. You need help. You need a change. And, the, and that's where we come in, too. Like, yes, God can speak to your heart, but as Christians and the body of Christ, part of our responsibility is out of love correcting our brothers and sisters and those who are coming to us. So, the next point is as Looking at God's relationship to us being a parental relationship, as a parent, do you condone everything your child does? I'll be honest in saying I know I don't. I love my children more than I can love anybody, with the exception of my wife. But that doesn't mean that everything they do or every attitude they have, or every, every behavior is acceptable. Amen. So, I want to point to Hebrews 
Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 to 8, 5 through 8, to kind of give, like, a, give a, another image of this. It says, And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as the sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you rebuke when you are rebuked by him. For when the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you with son, deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Basically, when if you have children and you love your children like all of us will, will say we do, how much love are you showing them if you, if you let them go down a path that's going to lead to nothing but problems? As much as I, I hate it, and I know my wife hates it, there was times we were forced to discipline our children. We were forced to tell them no, tell them to stop. And as a last resort, we might have to spank them. But we know that when we would rather have the discipline come to us and have a pain that is upsetting at the moment, then let the, they just say, you know, that's our children, let the behavior continue, and then ultimately get in worse trouble when they're teenagers or adults, right. when there's nothing we can do to really help them at that point. So, in closing, as Christians, we are told to love everyone. And it is true that everything we do is supposed to be done out of love. However, loving someone does not mean that we condone everything that they might do. We are to be living examples of God's love towards one another. And we are to love others as, as ourselves. And I know to add on to this, for myself, I, on the surface, I know it's not always fun to be corrected. It's not always fun to be told, hey, man, you know what, you're messing up. You know what, you need to stop doing that. But as I look deep down, that's what I truly desire, that's what I need, that's how I'm going to grow. And I know that the people that are doing that are doing it out of their love for me. The world wants us to believe that we that we want someone to accept everything about us and not judge us. And however, I would ask you, how much is it that at how much I would ask you how much love is that actually showing? If you see someone acting in a way that is dangerous and allow them to continue, knowing that they will end up in injury or death. Do you actually love that person? Basically, if I, like, if you were to see your child go run out into a street or, you know, a parking lot where they could get hit by a car and not look, not even stop, say, or, or, you know, play with knives or something extremely dangerous, say, are you just going to be like, oh, that's my kids, that's who they are. Everything, just let them go, they'll grow out of it. No, out of a true parent that truly loves their children is going to correct it right then and there. I can tell you that I love my children as much as I can love anyone. But that does not mean I will condone them running out into traffic or jumping out of a tree. God's love is an enduring selfless love. So much that he came down to teach us all how to live a, a life of righteousness and how to stay clear of the path that leads to spiritual death and ultimately sacrifice to
right? Don't love them enough or correctly or fully. However, it is because of love that I do correct my children and discipline them when I need to before it becomes out of hand. So I want to finish with one last question. So how do you love like God? The answer is looking at the love of a parent. I want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to what God has put on my heart. And I would like to close this off with a other word of prayer. Dear God, we just thank you again for this time, this message that you put on my heart. And I pray that whoever needs to hear it has heard it. And I pray for those that either are longing that type of 